I've always wondered what would happen if everybody in Ireland did crack cocaine at the same time. Would we start enjoying old child support videos? Would we start to become a violent animalistic species? Would we start- This is worse than I could have ever imagined. The Eurovision Song Contest is one of the leading causes of Irish people switching off their televisions in the month of May, which is a strange fact considering Ireland's illustrious Eurovision history. Sure, we haven't achieved anything remarkable in the contest for two decades, but on paper, Ireland is still the most successful Eurovision entrant of all time. Ireland has emerged victorious a record of seven times. Our first win occurred in 1970, and our last victory thus far was back in 1996. Ireland was well known for its reign of terror on the Eurovision in the 90s, winning three contests back to back in 1992, 93 and 94, which no other country has replicated to this day. Ireland was unstoppable in the Eurovision in this time period, to the point where they deliberately tried to lose the competition to avoid the expense of hosting it every year, and this was addressed in a classic episode of Father Ted. In the episode A Song for Europe, Ted and Dougal write a song called My Lovely Horse, hoping to represent Ireland in the Eurovision. Despite being the clear worst performance of the night, the song is ultimately selected as the winner of the Eurosong contest, and it is implied that Ted and Dougal were chosen because Ireland did not want to win the Eurovision yet again for financial reasons. This episode references the 1994 Eurovision Song Contest, where Ireland allegedly tried to lose with the song Rock and Roll Kids by Paul Harrington and Charlie McGettigan, but those madmen went ahead and won the whole competition, securing a record 226 points and a hat-trick for Ireland. This would be the second last time that Ireland would enjoy Eurovision glory, before one more victory in 1996, just a couple of weeks after this episode of Father Ted was broadcast. On the other hand, Ted and Dougal weren't as successful, and Ireland achieved their goal of losing the contest with the ridiculous entry My Lovely Horse. This was just a silly joke in an Irish sitcom which poked fun at Ireland overachieving in the Eurovision, but nobody knew that Ireland would actually pull a stunt like this 12 years later, and that it would be so much worse. You know, I was just about to utter the words, Ireland sent Dustin the Turkey to the Eurovision in 2008, but I think I experienced PTSD as soon as I remembered it. We have definitely had better ideas, and please do not ask me what we were smoking back in 2008, but this is one of Ireland's most iconic Eurovision performances, because it marked the point where we essentially cancelled the Eurovision. We have already discussed Ireland's Eurovision dominance in the 90s, with an impressive track record of 1st, 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 14th, 1st and 2nd, before the era of mediocre results, the year that we stopped giving a fuck, and the current decade where we failed to qualify 4 years in a row. Ireland's stranglehold on the Eurovision is a distant nostalgic memory at this point, and it leaves us wondering what went wrong along the way. After peaking in the 90s, Ireland gradually fell from grace throughout the years, until they hit rock bottom with a last place finish in 2007. It was clear that there was no hope for us at this point, and we knew that our previous success would remain in the past for all eternity. So in 2008, everybody in the country collectively lost their minds, and we gave a huge middle finger to the Eurovision by sending Dustin the Turkey to represent Irish music on an international stage. Now, if you're lucky enough not to be from Ireland, you may be confused at our decision to send a mechanical turkey instead of an up-and-coming talented musician, but let's just put this in context. Ireland was almost torn apart by a country singer not coming to Croke Park in 2014. Ireland accidentally legalised ecstasy and crystal meth in 2015, and Dustin the Turkey himself campaigned to become the President of Ireland. Twice. So, all things considered, sending him to the Eurovision isn't extremely out of the ordinary for us. Dustin's Eurovision performance may seem like an innocuous parody, but myself and a team of researchers have some shocking information regarding Dustin the Turkey's dark secrets and the repercussions of his performance. I am officially calling out Dustin the Turkey because he represented us in the Eurovision in May 2008, and the Irish government declared a recession in September 2008, and I think that is no coincidence. Some members of my team have accused Dustin the Turkey of committing tax fraud, trying to legalise yokes, and being a member of the IRA, but there's no concrete evidence to back up these claims just yet. However, the point stands that Dustin the Turkey performing in the Eurovision was Ireland's biggest bra moment, and probably one of the darkest points in Irish history. It wasn't a completely nonsensical decision though, because Dustin the Turkey actually has some musical experience under his belt. He has released six albums with fan favourite hits such as where do you go to? You're ugly. Don't blame the culties. And Patricia the Stripper. None of these albums are good, so nobody was expecting a winning performance from Dustin in the Eurovision. And we were right. Dustin performed a brand new single, Irland de Duspa, where he essentially spent three minutes in a trolley shouting, Give Ireland 12 points, which nobody did. If you're looking for genuinely entertaining music, I'm not sure if this is the right choice, 
but if you want to simulate the experience of having a stroke, then I cannot recommend it enough. Looking back on this disaster, it's actually amusing how a 7 time winner of the contest stopped caring about having a reputation, so we sent a novelty act to protest against this circus of a competition, while making ourselves look like the clowns. Ireland could have been a normal country in 2008, and we could have sent an actual musician, but we just had to be smart, and look where that got us. But in retrospect, it makes sense that Ireland would send a joke entry, because the Eurovision Song Contest is a complete farce, and good performances are few and far between. Sending Dustin to Turkey was a rebellious move, because historically, Ireland is very good at rebellions. Refusing to take part in the contest properly was an act of defiance, and it definitely wasn't out of spite because we're bitter that we're never going to win it again. Boycotting the Eurovision has become a global trend this year though, and I have never been a big fan of the contest myself, so I think I should support the cause. I will protest against the Eurovision by refusing to watch RTE ever again, and I will never give up no matter what they put on that television. Yeah, never mind. I give up. Here's a little lesson in trickery. This is going down in history. If you wanna be a villain number one, you have to chase a superhero on the run.